Hi, this is Joshua Milligan, and today we're going to take a look at a sample flow in Project Maestro, which is currently in Beta 3. So a few years ago, a client came to me uh, with some data and an issue that they were having. Uh, and that was that they had some of their data in SQL Server. They were tracking projects, and they had a table which had one record per project per month. And each month, you would get a snapshot of the project and things like the status and how many tasks were left to be done, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and most of the projects were tracked here in the system, uh, but there were some that were tracked manually. And in that case, what we had was a series of files, uh, CSV files. And again, it was uh, a monthly snapshot of projects. Uh, where the entire month was contained in one file. So the naming convention of the file would tell you the month, and you could see all of the projects contained in that month. And then, of course, we'd expect to get future files in future months. Now, there were some, uh, some complications uh, that we had to account for, and there were some objectives that we had to meet. Uh, so... First of all, we wanted to generate a final data set that had the latest snapshot for all projects. Uh, so in the system, we had one project per month, uh, one record per project per month. Uh, in the manual uh, files, we had a, uh, a monthly snapshot. But any given project might be in one or more months. So a project might be in January, it might be in February, but we might not have a record in March. But another project might have a record in April. So we needed to get the latest snapshot for each project, even if it was a, a different month for each project. Uh, second of all, we needed to track uh, the source of each project, whether it was uh, from the system or from the manual files, or in some cases, a given project might come from both. Uh, it might be in the system and it might be tracked manually. Uh, and if it existed in both sources, and if that was the latest snapshot, so let's say that a given project uh, existed uh, in March uh, for the manual files, and that was the latest snapshot, but it also was in the system for March, then we needed to favor the manual data. That is, we needed to keep only the manual record. Uh, but we still needed to know that it came from, from both systems. So this was uh, pre-Maestro, and... I had to uh, do this using only Tableau. It was possible, but Maestro would have made it a lot easier. So, for example, I would have uh, connected to SQL Server very easily, uh, simply uh, coming in here, uh, finding the right database, and then the right table in the database. So here the table is projects, and you can see it's... Uh, Got things like the ID and the category and a name for the project, status for the project. Uh, and it's fairly clean. So if we add a step, we can see here that uh, SQL Server, the data is fairly clean. Not a lot of cleanup needed. Uh, we may find some things as we go, but overall looks pretty good. Now the files, on the other hand, uh, we'll take a look. So I come to the text files, and I'll start with one of them. Uh, but I know that I'm going to get a file per month, and there are going to be additional files that come in. So I'm going to switch to multiple files and wildcard union. In this case, uh, I'll leave the matching pattern blank so that we get all of the files that come into this directory, uh, even in the future. And I'm going to uh, add a step to see if we need to do any cleanup. I can see that most of the uh, fields are very similar uh, to what I saw in SQL Server, but there is some cleanup here that's necessary. For one thing, uh, the files are not always consistent in the naming of the fields. So project name here, but name here, and then different capitalization here. All of these are the same, so I'm going to merge them together. And then I'll rename that uh, just project name. Uh, the other thing that I notice is that uh, project ID, uh, there is a null value here. It's one row, and it's actually null across the board except for the file path. So that's a fairly useless record. I'm going to exclude that. And that gets rid of some of the other nulls that I saw. But there are 25 null uh, number of blocking task records. 
And what I know here is, is that null in the file is the same as zero. So I'll select that type zero. And when I press enter, the, the zero values get grouped together. And uh, everything now is looking fairly good for the file. So that looks good. I'm now ready to uh, merge these two uh, ends of the flow together. Uh, so I'm going to do that with a union. And when I union them together, I see that uh, that based on the uh, color coding here, uh, the blue and the orange, I can tell which fields uh, found matches. I see that there are some that didn't find matches. And I can isolate those even further uh, by checking show only mismatched fields. And I see that the project status uh, is something I'm going to have to deal with. It only came from SQL Server. But I also see that the date and uh, file path uh, fields, uh, they didn't find matches. However, the file paths do contain the date. So I probably can get a match here. And in fact, if I go back to the previous step on the files, uh, I, uh, I look here and I realize there are several different ways I might approach this. I could probably split this apart on a space and extract the date. Uh, I could do other string manipulation, but it turns out that all I really need to do here, if I don't care about keeping the uh, full file path, uh, I can just switch the data type to date, and Maestro uh, grabs that first part of the string, recognizes it as a date, and everything else drops off. Uh, so then all I need to do is just rename the field as date, and now in the union, uh, I find a match on that date field. So if I show only the mismatched fields, project status is the only one that I'm going to have to deal with separately. So I'm going to add a step here. And the, uh, the project status then, uh, if I look and check and I look at the nulls, I realize those are the ones that come from the manual set of files. Uh, everything else comes from the database. Uh, the SQL Server table. And so what I know about the file is, is that everything we track manually is in fact open. So I'm going to uh, just rename that null as open. Uh, and then I'll clean up the uh, SQL Server values as well. So rather than just a single character, we'll actually give it some nice human readable uh, descriptions open. Uh, those two values get, uh, get grouped together, closed. Uh, and now we've got a nice, clean data set. Uh, except that when I look here at the project ID, I notice something. So I've got it uh, set here to the detail view. Uh, the summary view would show me kind of this nice histogram of, of values, but for an ID field, it's nice to switch to detail. And I see that uh, most project IDs have one one record, or at least many of them do, but there are some that have multiple records. So here's one with two rows of data. And the reason is that it is coming from the projects table and from that manual set of files. In fact, I'm going to go to my table names here and just rename that as source and change uh, the values here so that I can uh, so that I can more clearly see what that source is. So we've got manual and we've got system. And if I come back now to the project ID, uh, I can see uh, this project came from the system and it came from the manual files. Uh, here's another project with two rows. In this case, it came from the manual files, but it came in twice uh, because it came from different dates, January and then February. And so as I look through here, uh, here's one that was uh, February and uh, April. Uh, as in fact, as I scroll down, I may find uh, projects that, uh, that have even more than two rows. Here's one with six. Uh, three from the system uh, table, three from the manual files, and different dates for, uh, for each one of those. So I've, I've got to clean this up a little bit. I, I know my goal is to get the latest snapshot of each project, and I'm going to do that by adding an aggregation step. So add aggregate. And what I want to do is I want to find, per project, what is the maximum date. So I'm going to say, per project, uh, what is that maximum date? So we'll move that over to aggregate fields. 
I don't want a count of dates, I do want actually the maximum. So now what I can do is I can say, well, for each project, I know what that maximum date is. And if I select a date here, I can see which projects have that as the maximum date. So very nice there. And then what I can do is I can use this aggregate, which I'll rename as max date. I can join that back to the previous step in the flow. So new join. And when I do that, what I can do is match that on project ID and I will find which, uh, which projects uh, I'll match it only on that project and uh, and the date as well. So the maximum date to the date. And when it's an inner join, what I'll find is, is that I exclude 355 records where it was not the latest snapshot of that project. So Maestro shows me which records are excluded, which is really nice. And I can see this project, 15224. Uh, the record from January was excluded because I also have a record from February. Uh, and I can look down and see that that happens elsewhere. Uh, 16665, the February record is excluded because I have one from April. Uh, so now I have the latest snapshot uh, for each project. And if I take a look here, I can uh, add a step, and uh, I've got maybe a little bit of, uh, of cleanup here, just removing some of these uh, extra fields that get added by the join. Uh, project ID got duplicated, so I can remove that. Date got duplicated, so I can remove date-1. Uh, but I've got a really nice set of data now where it's the latest snapshot per project, but I still have some projects with multiple rows. And that happens when the latest snapshot occurs in both the source and manual file. So here I've got a uh, snapshot from January, which was the latest for that uh, project, but once from the system, once from the manual. And in that case, I know I want to keep that manual record but I also want to be able to tell that that project came from both sources. Uh, other projects uh, came from one or the other, and then some came from both. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another aggregation to, uh, to help me out. So if I add an aggregation here, what I can do is I can, uh, I can take the project, group by the project ID, and when I do that, I can check the number of records. Some projects will have uh, one record, if the latest snapshot was from one or the other source. Uh, but some will have two, if the latest snapshot was from both. Uh, so I'll use that here in a bit to, uh, to give myself a nice identifier for the source system. Uh, but I also want to, uh, to know what that source was. So I'm going to take source here, and I'm either going to use minimum or maximum, uh, but I'll use uh, Maestro's uh, brushing and user interface to figure out which I want. Uh, so if I choose minimum, uh, and I look at system, I see that system uh, only occurs for, uh, for records with, or for, for, for projects with one record. Uh, so that's great. Uh, the manual occurs for projects that have one or projects that have two records. And that's also wonderful because now I, uh, I have actually identified a uh, system where that is the only latest snapshot and manual where that is the only latest snapshot or where there are two latest snapshots but I'm going to keep the manual record. And so once again, I'll, uh, I'll join this back to the previous step. And when I do that, I can uh, match on the project ID and I can also match on that source. So where the, the minimum source equals the, uh, the source from the previous step. And I'll just double check, but I can see I've got 345 uh, records now excluded. 
and they should all be cases where I had a manual latest snapshot, so 14.121 manual, 14.121 system is excluded. So now I have given manual the preference, and if I scroll down here I see, I see system records that are excluded when there was also a manual uh, record as well. So at this point, I've got maybe just a little bit more cleanup. I'll uh, come in here to the next step. Uh, I've got some fields here created from that join. Source 1 is not needed because I have the original source. Uh, if I scroll over here, uh, project ID 1 also not needed, so I'll remove that one. Uh, and now the last thing to do is to, uh, to label the source system as manual system or both because I do have cases where, uh, where it came from both, uh, both the manual and the system, and I, already, I, will, I will know that based on the number of records. So when it was uh, one uh, record, it came from either manual or system. When it was two records, it came from both. Now I've only kept the manual records, but I've kept the ability to label where it came from, and that will be perfect. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll create a calculated field, and this will, be, uh, this will be the source of the record. And if the number of uh, records was 2, uh, then I'll give it the label of both. And otherwise, I'll keep the, uh, the source label as it was. And now I know the actual source of the record. So I've got, uh, I've got uh, records that came from both systems. I've got records that came from the manual set of files and, and uh, records that came from only the system set of files. So now this source uh, field is no longer relevant because I've got, uh, I've got the three values that I really care about. The number of records field, I no longer really need that either, so I'll remove that. And at this point, I have a really nice data set that I can take into Tableau or I could export it to a CSV uh, or an extract of some kind and do further analysis, uh, start to look at the projects, the status, uh, the number of tasks, and do all kinds of visualization and analytics to help me understand better uh, the projects that I'm maintaining.